In this video we'll cover exciting future of the new physical base lighting and shadow leaking plus updates to the ultra lighting system for the ultimate creative control of your lighting and shadows of the scene to bring your art to the next level. I have loaded the basic interior scene for an overview of the update for ultra lighting. It now has two main sections. I see when I open up and we'll see light groups and we have lights and shadow linking. To build quickly the light groups, you can use the add all collection button right here. Go through all the lights in your collections to create a separate light group. You have light emissions, you added those two lights are here, light exterior, I did the area one and two light interior, and also the world. And you can quickly delete them by selecting remove all light groups, this button. You can also build them quickly by selecting the collection where you have your lights and clicking on this add objects. Light emission, light exterior, multi-select the lights and add them. We can quick easily re re rename it the world light group by clicking on the add world. Turn on preview render. To turn on light group compositing, which combines all the light groups to preview render or final render. Checkbox here. Since we have selected all the lights in the light groups, turn it on, on and off exactly the same. But if I remove a light group, this part of all the lights in the scene, you'll notice that now there's a mismatch when you composite all the light groups because they will not have all the lights on the scene. And add back the light exterior, it matches again. Go into solo mode, preview the light group in real time in the preview render. The lights on the light group can be adjusted, but they will cause a re-render. So to adjust the light information for the light groups in real time, we use tone mapping. You can select all of these options. All of these adjustments are done in real time with a re-rendering. A new option now is that we can control the shadows for the whole light group. But it does require you enabling the light and shadow linking. If I want to turn off the shadows for the whole light group interior, just select cast shadows and I'll turn it off. That way you'll notice that, that no shadows for that light group as on my solo mode. It changes the whole compositing of the scene dramatically. For more information about light groups and all the other features available, check my previous videos in ultra lighting and related videos. Let's look at the new light and shadow linking feature. I have loaded a, a simple scene where we have two light groups. We have a light blue that is linked to the cube, the light white that is linked to a cylinder. I have enabled compositing light groups and if we solo mode you'll see that the white linking to the cylinder shows the only the white cylinder on the blue and enables only the cube. So you'll notice linking also generates bounce lighting for diffuse and glossiness onto other objects that are not part of the linking. Some bounce information on the plane that is not selected on the light linking, the same thing with the white. And that's partly good to have just because it just makes it more natural when you start merging the different lights together. And it's something that's done in Arnold, Octane and other professional light linking renders. Add now the plane to each of the light groups. By just selecting the plane, clicking on the add, let's go to the blue, add the plus. The light linking also is a completely separate feature and also changes to the light linking and, and shadow linking will create a re-render. Turn off the light group compositing, still will have the light linking being active independently. Go back to solo mode, Let's look at the effect that happens when we add the plane. Looking at the light blue, we have the cube has also a, a shadow cast onto the plane. Shadow is casting a shadow into other objects. If you turn off the cube, there's no shadow on the cube onto the plane. 
basically when you turn off shadow on the plane, plane doesn't project into any other object, so there'll be no difference. Now look at the white light group and you'll see also the shadow onto the plane. You can easily turn it off and now the cylinder doesn't cast any shadows onto the plane. Shadow linking is a completely separate feature controlled by clicking on the this shadow linking icon. And if you turn it off, you'll see that now we get the cylinder casting the shadow onto the plane, but also the cube is casting a shadow into the plane, even though it doesn't belong to the light linking group. Light linking affects the light onto the objects that you have selected. In this case, it's the cylinder, but it does not control the shadows if you don't have shadow linking turned on. Here's another example of a, another professional render with the same setup. And we can see in Octane, this is K-Cycles. You can see that it's still, when I disable the blue light, so we have the white light only shining to the cylinder. And we can still see that this bounce coming into the cylinder, which is standard. The other issue that you have is not having shadow linking is that you get shadows into objects that are not part of your linking and this causes the cylinder. It's one of the nice things that we now have with shadow linking in case cycles that you can control where shadows are where you want it to be and not in objects that don't belong to that group. Clearly an advantage to have that control. You can see the cylinder now only has a shadow. The cube, which is not part of the linking group, does not have shadow by enabling the shadow linking control. Inverting in lighting shadow linking means the objects are affected by only the other lights and not the current light that you have. So the current light group would become black because the cylinder in the plane are receiving light from the other in the scene. Go out of solo mode. We inverted the objects on the light white light group. Now only going to be receiving light from the blue light. Now the cylinder has a blue light in the shadow. If I let's reverse this one. And then let's go to the light blue light group. If I invert these objects from the light blue, so now only white affects these items, the cube and the plane with shadows. Let's look at a demonstration on a product lighting using the new case cycle features, including light and shadow linking. This model I downloaded from Blender Kit. Let's turn preview render and let's improve the lighting by focusing on the perfume battle less on the backdrop plus let's add more visual interest to the perfume bottle we start by adding the different lights into into separate light groups to be able to control different intensities and let's add the backdrop light by selecting it and clicking on the add selected objects on the light bulb icon we do the same thing with key light side light top light and let's add the world light by clicking on the world icon let's click on compositing light groups Let's select the backdrop light and let's go into solo mode. Create more focus and interest in the perfume bottle and less in the background. We're going to start reducing light intensity of the backdrop by selecting tone mapping. Cut the power in half. And it's always good to undo solo and, and see how we can make in progress. Now let's select the key light, light linked by selecting the perfume on the collection and adding the plus sign, select the boxes. We're going to quickly undo the solo mode and now let's select the side light. And here I like to create that scent light, blue light, just on the perfume bottle. Let's select it and add it to the light linking. Just make sure that we have light linking selected. Every time you work with the light linking, you will, it's going to cause a re-render due to it. It's, it's a physical change on the lighting system. You see now the light is only affecting the perfume bottle and nothing else. And now let's create some more intensity. By increasing it, I really see that that is a had more visual interest, and you can undo the solo mode, and now you can really see the the blue light accent shining on the perfume bottle. Select top light linking for the perfume bottle and the boxes only. You can see the top view light. Undo the solo mode. If you notice this deep shadow here on the box cast from the perfume bottle. I think it's a bit too distracting and I like to use shadow linking to, to reduce the intensity because it takes away focus from the actual bottle itself. The shadow is being cast from the top light and from the key light. 
I don't want to remove it completely because it would look too unnatural. So let's just remove it from the top light. I can go light and shadow linking and I can say I don't want the perfume bottle to cast any shadows into, in this case, will be the, the boxes. Take off shadow and you can see right away that there's no shadows being cast in, in this light group. Go into normal mode. Now we have shadows but it's a lot lighter and less distracting. So that's one of the really powerful features that you can do with, with shadow linking is control where you where you want your shadows and if you want how much intensity of shadows you have from different light groups. So last on the light groups that we currently have, I'll select world and do the go back to regular mode. And I do want to increase a little more the world environment light. And then we can add one well, maybe fifty percent more. You can add get more brightness and it. it looks a little bit better and you can see that increase it on this light group one important thing in product lighting is, is to get some rim light and here it really doesn't have a good great more light going through that perfume liquid to get more interest let's add a rim light let's go to regular mode i've already had i've already created one to give off so i need to take away the compositing because i still have not added the rim light into my light groups you can see that the rim light is shining on back of the boxes and partially into the perfumes. Let's add it into the light groups by selecting it. We add it here. So now we have a rim light. This part of the group, all the light groups. Now we can compost it and be part, part of it be visible. Also light linked only to shine the rim light onto only the bottle and nothing else. So we select the perfume. Let's light link it. You noticed there's no, there's no more light on the backdrop or in the back of the boxes. Let's change to camera mode. It is only shining here. Just a quick test. You can see that if I turn the light off here on the, the noticeably a difference, or you can avoid having to re render by going to solo mode. You can see exactly how much light is being affected into the rim. And as you can see, there's only the perfume bottle and nothing else because I have it light linked. The perfume liquid and bottle has a lot more interest in light coming from the rim light. Now as a final polish, let's do some post effects. Here's our post effects section, enable post effects. First thing I like to do is bloom. I like to also use a mask because I want to just bloom only select the perfume collection and add it as part of the mask. So only the bloom is being affected only on the bottle. Let's increase the amount of bloom power and dynamically in real time adjust the amount of bloom. Subtle bloom, so let's leave it at 1.5 and do the white soft and that looks pretty nice. As you see, you can always toggle back and forth your bloom effect to see how much or how much we add into it. Tone mapping, so we select it. I want to have a little bit less shadow here. So I will increase the amount of shadow, maybe 1.2, a little bit lighter now on the shadows. So I like to add a little bit of saturation, gives more pop, more vibrance onto, into that color. We can undo subtle, but those subtle changes can really make a big difference when you add it all together. Let's add some lens effects, the vignette. Let's add some slight lateral chromatic aberration, 0.1. You can go back and forth and toggle it to see how much you're adding. And we can turn off some of the options to see how much we change the scene by turning off the post effect, which is all the effects together. Turn off the light linking. Lastly, we can also turn off compositing on the light groups. You can see it's quite dramatic. So let's turn it back on. A nice feature of the light groups is that you can actually apply all your tone mapping back into the lights. Enable compositing, all of that effect of the lights that we've done with the tone mapping for the individual light groups. Apply them to the lights. There's no more need for light groups tone mapping by applying tone mapping to lights using this icon. And now if I turn off compositing, it looks exactly the same. Go to the different lights that I've changed in the actual power of the actual light itself. Now that we've completed all the adjustments, let's do a final render. The perfume bottle looks much more dramatic, much more interesting. And also we can compare that we have exactly the same image on the viewport that we have been able to adjust mostly real time with the light groups and using the light linking and post effects. This is just a fraction 
of your creative lighting possibilities with K-Cycles, light groups, light and shadow linking, and post effects. Uh, thanks for listening.